go uh, down the course here for Osprey of the Modesto squad. Spain very, very much. Uh, uh, Modesto and Onse, probably two of the strongest teams that we're likely to see in soccer racing this year. Uh, Modesto putting in something like 100,000 was the rumoured uh, contract for the services of Indoran and another 700,000 for the contract for uh, Delgado. So it's 1.4 million pounds. And if you see it in Peseta, it was a noughts off the edge of a bit of paper. Uh, when I saw the contract in Peseta, I couldn't believe it. They had to translate it back into, uh, into pounds. So it looked, even then, a lot of noughts. But that's what it's all about. Uh, cycle racing in Spain. We've seen enormous coverage on television. And one way of getting a brand name known over a wide area. And Vanessa being a bank wants to get away to bank with him. And no one just... Right, 2431. That's what's that going to do in third place for Etsy? Well, some of the people. Oh, this is great. This one will go. The time's going to go. That's the new winner we got there. New leader, 2406. So we've now got a, a new leader. That from Luc Leblanc has really caught the wall on the hopper. Cameron just got it in time. Thank goodness for that. As he's, he's top men come. Prosper on his way up. Here's another good one. Oh. Change the leaderboard yet again. Benesto, who got their rather in first and second place in the general classification, look like they're going to get themselves up there again. 23 16, a cracking that was, puts him way up in the lead for Jorospe. 23-16, so the race in the prologue time trial. We saw him finish in the ninth spot just a week ago. He's still desperately for that position, which he established early on in the race. He's been wandering out the top ten. He's been ninth and tenth overall in general classification. And then, of course, the big climb up for Marseille, uh, Toulon. Uh, he was there with the uh, riders, but, but slipped back a bit on general classification. And I think that uh, Mount Farm climb really sorted out a few legs. And I wonder, really, if uh, either way recovered from that 26-second uh, beating by Rominger. 12 second beating by Bernard to have the courage to uh, really have a crack at winning this one today. So back there down the centre of the course, we've not yet picked up the men that matter, the top uh, five on general classification. Golf Golf's then, and he's a fast man, a tremendously quick, best performance because he can be on the track past uh, Man of the Second in the pursuit to championship of the world and now he is here, he set a very good time in the time trial on the opening day when he rocketed round the course uh, in uh, eight spot, just 12 seconds back and of course early on this year he popped off and caught them all napping uh, in, the, in the early season race uh, down there in the Mediterranean they were all relaxing and not taking much notice and he clopped off and uh, three 42, we're having to do some little calculations of what it does to the general classification. Uh, back down the course here, and whilst he's on his way up, let's have a little look at the, the general classification as it is at the moment. As uh, entire this year, had a very good win on stage four in the Ruta del Sol, and we first time we see him out on this climb. So I think he can be quite a threat at the moment because look at Montoya on the, the classification, he uh, was 25 seconds behind uh, John to Bernard this morning and just a mere 14 seconds separating him from uh, Tony uh, Rominger and there uh, is the position of, the, uh, of Rominger we're looking still back down though at uh, Montoya of Spain quite a useful product time trial performer in the Tour of Mercy and Tour of Spain in 87. Uh, he had a couple of third places. Seems to have gone a bit quiet since then, but uh, this year he's come back with a bit of a bang. And Roman has found form early on in the season, and the crowd here urging on this fan. Lying fourth overall this morning when they came up the climb. Right. Notes. Let's see what Charlie's going to do and see if he's going to hang on to his place because Charlie was normally start out in eight spots or the south split stage. So Charlie, 24, 23, 24, 23. And, uh, not only in the Pyrenees that he's won twice, but last year winning the Tour of France and still a very great favourite here. Quite unassuming man.
who for years expected and looked after his team leader Pedro Delgado was given the opportunity last year to show his complete strength and all round strength both in uh, his ability to climb down the time trial and although he had uh, bronchitis early on this year and came into the pain he's suffering somewhat he's treated everybody with a real gutsy performance and had it not been for that problem that he had on the finish of the uh, hill of Mount Follant on the Marseille too long stay on stage six then would still have been up there at Jersey which he took over after the uh, time trial on stage four. Ingrain in action further on down the slope. Uh, everybody then here with a faded breath to see the battle going on as uh, Giorgio Furlan coming up here. And Furlan, let's see what sort of time we're going to get off him. Just to see if they're going to be 24-36, any shuffling in these minor places because they are the follow start this morning just five seconds ahead of uh, Christophe Manin and uh, Rolf Goltz though who should be the next one to see coming in with 57 seconds there on Jean-François uh, Christophe Manin well I don't think he's got, had a very good climb up here yes he has my goodness yeah. I thought he'd done better than a minute from Christophe Evans, Giorgio Furlan, 24-36, and there he is, a significantly much faster ride, and this is going to a new 23-12, so that is a new leader for Christophe Manin, 23-12, it's just some, uh, what, 21 seconds outside the record for this climb, which was set by Jean-Fan Bernard in 1990, Miguel Enderan on his way up the climb, just on this course, in 1990 it was 23 minutes and 32 seconds so even if he does that he won't win this time trial today but can to his second that he's got from Jean-Francois Bernard or can he pull back those vital seven seconds you can see really gritting his teeth here pushing quite big gear he's got a tall you can see by the size of the head stock on his bicycle but he's not one of the small pocket rockets that you get for climbing mountains he really is a big punchy rider back then who was leading this race early on and what a great early season rider he is too now coming up to about 30 years of age he's been now in the cycle sport for years as such and he's great time trial is the great fine ride in the Grand Prix National in 86 and uh, that one has surprised everybody and since then he's shown his all round ability if you're watching Eurosports coverage of the Phil Lombardy a couple of years ago he won the great man for early season and season racing. Way back in 1990 won the Terreno Adriatico which takes place at the same time of the Pyrenees. So the reason he does well at the early season well, on, forgive me some people may have just come in to see him in action it's because Rominger suffers from hay fever at the height of the season and had difficulty breathing so the man breathing extremely well so far in this race because when we had the product time trial just one week ago he rocketed around the 6.45 sorry we offered around the 5.7 kilometer circuit in 6 minutes and 45 seconds Rominger really punching hard here taking that white jersey on day one kept it through a couple of days and Cipollini the Italian sprinter par excellence was winning stages but lost it when his team, Klaas, could only finish 8th in the uh, team time trial. And battling back in the so Sir won the stage from Marseille to Toulon, up Mount Follon. Uh, looking back down to see what uh, uh, we're going to get here. Still again inside this uh, Magic 24. Juggling with all the time here to see what the general classification is going to look like at the end of the battle going on further down there. 23. Uh, Six ten for Rolf Goltz. And 50 was this morning, 57 seconds of drift from Jean-François. Best time we've got so far, 23.12. And uh, that was set by Christophe Manin. 3,300, that's it, on the left-hand side. Rominger, the star performer on this climb. Last year of the Pyrenees has got to really throw down the gauntlet he came up last year in 23.53 he's got tremendous
knowledge of this sort of climb here, but Jean-François Bernard, who's starting last of all, is the stronger at the moment. There we are at the halfway point. Robert in fact, was ahead of Jean-François Bernard by one second. Halospe, who was leading at one time on this climb, was back in third spot. Give me some idea of the effort this rider is putting in for. Has he started too, too fast, too soon, though? This sort of time trialling is all about judgment on the way up a long climb. You can blow in the man with that suddenly wipe seconds off as uh, Jesus Montoya coming up the road now. Montoya started this morning in fourth place, just 25 seconds down on the uh, leader, uh, Jean-François Bernard. And he's going to put up a cracking time as well. He's not going to take the lead, but that'll be another benchmark then for the people to follow. 23.36 for Jesus Montoya. In third place, third spot at the moment. Uh, and that was 20 seconds better than Rolf Gold, so Goltz isn't going to catch him on the uh, general classification. But Rominger, who was uh, just some 14 seconds adrift, has already shown that early on he's the man to go. And unlucky for some is 13. For this man, Jean-François Bernard, wearing number 13 on his back, it could be his lucky day. And can he win this great race then? Bernard being cheer uh, cheered on all the way up. Has unfortunately had a bit of a hectic uh, season uh, last year, but he came back in to ride for Benesto to show that by no means was he over and done with. So John Francois Bernard here enlivening this race in fine style and all the way along the course because at one time this man was tipped to be the rider that would in fact take over from uh, Bernard Hino. He failed in fact to live up to his reputation in those days and people began to write him off. But now he's come back in fine style, he's got the white jersey and he knows how to climb this hill at a great rate or not and this is the man that he's got to beat. So still then, the battle between Tony Rominger and Jean-François Bernard it rages up and down this hill. Slightly flatter part of the course up here for Tony Rominger. He's really beginning to move now. What a success list he's had over the years then as Indrain on his way up as well. In rain this morning, set out just seven seconds uh, adrift of Jean-François Bernard. 23-16. This is the... Uh, Benchmark then, 23-25. Let us see then what happens further back down the course because we've got just two riders to come up. Just two on the course. This is a cliffhanger with Jean-François Bernard uh, on his way up, the uh, last man to go, and up in front the phalanx of motorcycles clearing away for him. Slender and second second in from Miguel Indran when they start this time trial. Indran already finishing at 23.25, and uh, so he's got to stay within seven seconds of that, so on a quick calculation here, seven to that makes 32, so he's got to be inside 23.32 to uh, take the success. Rominger coming up now, they split these on the climb, what's Rominger going to do? Uh, 20, look at that, 22-22, Rominger absolutely is going to throw the gauntlet down, can he win it on the final day up this mountain, this is a cracking ride and it really is going to cause some trouble for those two men still on the course, or one man on the course, because as he comes across the line it takes him into the 22-38, that is absolutely tremendous, it breaks the record of the course, a new record 22-38, gives him the record, gives him possibly the win in the Paris. Now Jean-François Bernard, this is the man who this morning, as we start up this climb, had just 11 seconds lead over uh, Tony Rominger. So with Tony Rominger, that means it's 22.40, sorry, 22.42 is what he's got to beat, uh, 22.43. That's why he's got to be inside, 22.43 to win if my Netflix correct. I've got bits of paper all over the place here. What a humdinger. What's that clock on the right-hand side then? These two runners separated by 11 seconds this morning, Rominger and Jean-François Bernard. 22.32 the time, add 11 onto that, 22.43 it'll be, and that's his target, and way up there, the crowd is waiting anxiously, checking their watches likewise. Ingerand has already come in across the line, 23.25, and that was a full minute slur than uh, Tony Rominger. So Ingerand Actually, he's not going to win the race. Rominger's now climbed over the top of Miguel Indelan. But this man is really giving it some stick. And the crowd... Uh, 
are cheering, the noise, and the team manager is shouting in the megaphone, and there is the battle. It's going to be 22-43 to according to my clock calculation here, and it's going to be, I think, a win for Bernard. He's got this one of the... He's got to come around that corner and sprint down the finishing straight. He could probably do it. Come on, then. Joel falls right. It looks like he's back with a bang. This could be the victor of the parody. Subject of conversation. 22 According to my calculation, uh, Jean uh, has taken the uh, Paris just by the sniffle biscuit. No, that will have to wait though till the proper calculations are done on a proper computer rather than the scribble bits of paper here in this excited comedy box. What a cracking race. But if we have races like that for the rest of this year, I should think that you good people will be queuing up. You haven't got your jolly old uh, satellite dishes and watching this in a friend's house to go and get them because this bike racing at the moment is getting better and better. Bike riders are coming back and they're... 22-15, turning over to 23 seconds back, they start separated by... So no doubt about it, Jean-Francois Bernard has got... In fact, all the classics coming up as well as the tours play. Next the rest of this year, we're going to think that 1992 will be one of those classic years. So, and then Pyrenees has 